what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're doing over the wire and to latest level 15 in level 15 we're going to explore a different kind of an sql injection in the previous video we went over um, a scenario of sql injection where we performed simple bypass of double quotes in today's challenge it is similar with a bit of uh, differences so the first thing we see here is uh, a prompt for a username, input box for a username, and we check if the username does exist or not. And we can see also check uh, the source code. Let's take a look at the source code as we do all the time with this kind of challenges. The first thing we see here, we have this line. So this indicates that we have a table named users with two columns, usernames and passwords. So this is kind of hint, and it's telling you that the password and the username both have a maximum of 64 characters. Not exactly 64, a maximum of 64 characters. We know before from previous challenges that the password of every challenge is composed of maximum of 32 characters. Okay, now that's the first thing we put in mind. Other thing is similar to what we saw earlier in the previous SQL injection challenges in over the wire. We have a username that's being uh, taken from the user as a get request and is passed directly without any input filtering into an SQL query. So this is the SQL query select from users with username and here goes our input. It's gonna check if the username exists or not. And then we have this debug, it's all, it also checks if debug is appended in the URL uh, so that it returns the query that got executed, this line. All right, and then we have this, this is a check if there's an exist or doesn't exist. And that's it. Now, what we need is the username and the password. For example, if we type native 16, and we click on check existence, you can see the user does exist. If we try NAS15, the user does not exist. So that's all we can do with this challenge, as it seems. So we can also, we can only check the existence of a specific user. Now, this is not an SQL injection. It's not an, not an error-based SQL injection. It is sort of blind SQL injection. Why? Because the thing we're looking for, which is the password, is not clear whether uh, there is a, uh, a clear way to obtain the password. We only have the username. And we can only check if the username exists or not. So what we're gonna do about this? We're gonna use something called the like statement. So let me go back here and show you guys in blind SQL injection, we try, we always use the like. Not always, but we use the like in the SQL query, indicating that we want to perform a couple of tries against a specific column. And we want to see if the character here does exist in the column or not. For example, here in this example, we check if the database, okay, contains the character S at the beginning, right? Here, the same example, but we check if SQ, the both, both characters S and Q, exist in the first, uh, as, as, you know, the first two letters in the world that composes the database column. And here we have the full statement, as you can see, the full query, and table name like A. So you would check if the table name starts with the uh, letter A. Now, as you can see, the character could come before the percentage sign or could come after the percentage sign. If it comes before here, it means that we are looking if the character does exist in the first of the word. If it comes here, if we remove this and say A, here, it means we're looking, uh, we're trying to find if A does exist at the end of the word that composes the table name, right? 
So that's what the like statement does. So we're going to use the like statement because we want to guess the password. So here we want to guess the password for the user 16, native 16. That's the only way to that's the only way to crack this challenge. We're going to use the like to guess the password. But um, this is going to be a time consuming and tedious process because we're going to have to do it manually. Try with A, then try with B, then try with C to guess every letter in the word or the password. Now this could get very long. That's why we're going to rely on Python. We're going to rely on scripting to get the job done. So that's how it, I turn on to the script and demonstrate to you guys how this is going to work. So we're going to start with Python. We're going to define the URL parameter, okay, the username and the password. The username and the password are the ones for the previous uh, challenge. Okay, so you put them here to be able to so that Python can access the uh, next challenge which we are under uh, taking right now. And then we use join and we generate strings, letters, and digits. Because we know, guys, this is a sample password. This is the password of the previous challenge. As you can see, the password is 32 bit, or sorry, 32 characters long. It contains uppercase, it contains lowercase, numbers, digits, so on and so forth. So we want to generate a dictionary of characters, and then we want to try these characters. So the next thing, as you can see here, guys, we define or we declare a dictionary, an empty dictionary, and then we define a string that indicates whether the user does exist or not. So why are we using this? Our S we're gonna send an SQL query to the application here in this input box. We're gonna say username equal native 16 and password like binary. So password is the field we're trying, is the column we're trying to guess the value of. And we use like because we can, we wanna try uh, a list or array of characters, right? And then we use binary because we don't know the coalition of the column. Okay, so we use the binary. And then we use, as you can see, two percentages and between them, the character we have generated from here. Now, two percentage signs will check if the character does exist in the password. If it does exist, the application will return the user exists. And that's how we're going to perform the comparison here. Okay. And if the user exists, it, mean, it means that, yes, the user exists because it's native 16 and the password uh, and the character does exist in the password. Because if the query here returns the user exists, it means both sides of the query before and and after the end returns true. Okay. If they return true, it will return or the application will return the user exists. And that's the criteria we can rely on to know what are the valid characters. So this is the if statement. If the valid string exists in R text, R text, as you can see here, it is the uh, R, it is the variable that contains the parameters of the request that we sent. And based on that, we built a dictionary and we store the values in the password dictionary. We have built up until here, we have built um, a dictionary of valid characters that exist in the password, but doesn't mean that they are in a valid order. We have to find out what is the valid order. So we use another for loop. So here we define a password list, dictionary empty one, and a password tool we use for comparison. And again, guys, we're going to use the join function to use, as you can see here, guys, the characters that we defined earlier from above and store them into password two. And here we send the query to the application username equal native 16 and password like binary. And here we want to see if the test now test here contains the dictionary we have built earlier, which consists of the valid characters. 
we want to see every single character if it does exist at the very beginning of the password that's why we put test before the percentage sign and we continue with the same uh, logic we have used before so if we try this as you can see these are the attempts and every attempt so but it started with t because t does exist at the very beginning of the password and then it returned r and d as you can see it goes on and on until it gives you the complete password all that is based on the feedback we get from the web application if the user does exist or not you can perform this operation yourself um, in a manual manner so what you can do you can send the sql query in the box here so nato 16 and double quote because i want to close the double quotes that the application uses when executing the query you go to the source code the application is using double quotes as you can see here i want to close them so i use nato 16 double quotes and then uh, and password like binary and also we close the double quotes and then we use say here um, see if the password ends with t so we check the existence and it says the user doesn't exist so this means guys that the application executed the sql query that's how we built the script and that's how the script is iterating through every single attempt by changing the letters here in this position. Um, doing that will return the correct password for the next level. Let's try that. I haven't tried it honestly, so let's see. Nate 16. We have chief at the first and then paste. And this is the next challenge. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you later.